I was throat deep in the midst of an epic hack, when all of a sudden, I encountered a firewall. Oh dear, I've encountered a firewall. And in order to break it, I'm gonna need to come up with four excellent voicings for a C major chord. No probalo. I'll just plug in my trusty hacker's MIDI controller and make short work of this particular business. All right, let's see. Uh, mm, no. Uh, uh, hmm. uh, uh, oh, crap, I'd better hurry. U.S. government is on my tail. I is U.S. government. Crap, I've been spotted. Luckily, I had a hacker's trick up my sleeve. Wait a minute, what's that over there? I don't think those civilians have been drone striked yet. Oh, what? D drone strike? Hell yeah! Works every time. Now to make my getaway. I knew that next time, I might not be so lucky. I was gonna need an epic hack, so I reluctantly made my way to the secret lair of an old acquaintance. Oh, I always knew you'd come crawling back. Spare me the lecture, old man. I need a hack, and not just any hack. I need the ultimate chord voicing hack. Oh, a chord voicing hack, eh? Use this. It's called the Scrambler. <laughs> the Scrambler? What do you take me for? Some kind of chef making eggs? Hardly. The scrambler is a musician's tool. It's very simple. You just input a set of harmonic frequencies. Then when you press the scramble button, it randomly selects one of those frequencies and multiplies or divides it by a factor of two. <laughs> you science types are all the same. All talk and no balls. Why don't you give it to me straight before I get pissed and kill you with my gun? You need to understand the physics, damn it! Music is composed of sound waves, and sound waves are best understood through precise mathematics! Precise mathematics? I just feel it, bro. And that's why you couldn't even muster four decent voicings for a C major chord! All right then, I'll explain it to you simply. It just takes one of the notes in the chord and puts it in a different octave. That's it! That's it? That's it! But that can't be it. What kind of lame hack is that? Sometimes simple is best. Just trust it. Fine then, you old piece of crap. I'll be on my way. Little does he know I'm actually a time-traveling version of him from the future. But that plot twist is beyond the scope of this episode. I engaged in the hack once more, praying to the Lord Most High that that old coot hadn't duped me into trying to use some garbage fool hack. All right, I've encountered the firewall once more. Time to try this thing out for size. Okay, I've input the notes for C major. Now I just hit scramble. Hmm. Oh. Oh, hey. These actually sound pretty good. To think I could arrive at such quality voicings by simply moving the same notes around. Guess that old man was really onto something. Yes, I've broken the firewall. Time to download some child po- So ever since I heard the legend of this hack, and obviously I have no relation to this hackerman, I've been searching, unsuccessfully, for a scrambler of my own only to discover that it is in fact a decibel reader with a USB cable, somewhat loosely attached. So uh, that was pretty disappointing. But it got me thinking, well maybe the real scrambler is what's inside. So what is this hack, why does it work, and how can we apply it? In any kind of creativity, the most important aspect, in my view, is the limitations that you have, the framework that you're working within, right? It's like if I ask you, what is your favorite thing in life? That's a pretty hard question to answer, right? It's so broad. But if I ask you, what is your favorite pizza flavor? You'd be like, oh, that's easy. Pineapple and anchovy with no cheese or sauce or crust. I just like pineapple. When you focus in the question, it's a lot easier to come up with answers. And in this case, it's much the same. What we're essentially doing when we're trying to come up with chord voicings is we're asking the question, how can I make this chord sound good? 
But that in itself is kind of a broad question, and we'll end up maybe stumbling around like the hacker when he's just adding random notes to C major. But if we narrow the question and we say, what octaves can I scramble these notes to? Suddenly we have an easier question to answer. So let's take a look at how this works. Let's start with our hacker boy examples. So we have this C major triad, most basic closed voicing possible. That doesn't really make me feel much of anything. Maybe like a sort of mild disappointment. But if we take these same notes and we scramble them, let's move this E up an octave. That's already a lot more interesting. Now let's take this C and move it down an octave. Ooh, right, that's pretty nice. Has a sense of uh, coming home. We can go further, let's put the E down in the low octave and then put the C up high. Mmm, that's nice. I'm starting to feel things. Maybe we could put the G up here. Hmm. Right, so just from that boring old triad, we can actually get some interesting emotions. And this gets exponentially cooler when you start to have more notes. So if we just take that same boring C major and add a B, I guess the B stands for boring, ha 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 ha. We turn it into a C major 7, just again a really basic closed voicing. We can do so much by scrambling this. So much. First, let's, uh, let's try putting the C down an octave. Mm, that's pretty cool. Let's go back to where we were. Let's put the E up an octave. It's the classic guitar voicing. Okay, what if we have the E on the bottom, and then the B, and then the C, and then the G? Mm. Now what if we take the C and the G and put them up another octave? Ooh, that's interesting. And this is a voicing that I don't think I would have ever arrived at if I hadn't been thinking in these terms, right? Like, E and B on the bottom is not what I think of when I think of C major 7. That's such a cool sound. Another thing that's really nice about this is that it can help you make sense of those larger chord extensions, right? Like, you can know about a 7th chord and be like, okay, E flat 7 is when you have... 7 on the top that kind of makes sense, and then a 9 chord is when you add 8, 9 on the top, that makes sense, yeah, sounds fine. But once you get above that, it gets sort of weird, because you're like, okay, so 11 is when you go two more notes, you do an A flat on the top, and then you play it, and it's, you're like, what? It sounds bad. It's just bad, like, what? Time to get out the scrambler, son. Or daughter. So, if we take the G, move it up an octave, or two octaves rather. Whoa! Like suddenly, 11 chords make sense. That's such a cool sound, right? And it's just from moving the note up two octaves. It's all, it's all the same. It's that, just without that G there, up there instead. Bingo! Now, something to bear in mind when you're using this is that you don't have to be a slave to the limitation that you've created. Once you get ideas flowing, you can abandon the training wheels, essentially, and zoom ahead. So if I were using this, uh, let's say we're doing F sharp minor seven or nine or something. So maybe let's, let's say we have these notes, F sharp minor nine, and let's say I start scrambling. So I'll put the A up an octave, maybe. Maybe you put the E down an octave. That sounds interesting. Ooh. Down two octaves. Hmm. Now maybe at this point I'd want to try adding new notes. Because that or maybe changing the C sharp to a B. Ooh. And that's granted that's not really an F sharp minor nine anymore, but this is a cool chord. I would not have gotten here if I hadn't been scrambling. So let's go back to our C major seven example, right? We'll start with that. Maybe uh, toss the B up here. Put the E up here. And when thinking about this voicing, maybe I'll have an idea for something to add. Like I want to try putting in a D on the top. I want the D. And that's fine. The point of the limitation is not to constrict you, it's to focus in. So you can start quickly coming up with ideas, and then once those are flowing, you can, as I said, abandon the training wheels and zoom ahead. So the sky's the limit. I encourage you 
to immediately quit YouTube, not to give the video a like and you know, comment stuff, but go and try this out. Just get some simple chord voicings, you know, triads, and just move them around and see how the combinations feel. As Jacob Collier would say, examine the feeling. I guess that would be examine the feeling because it's British. Try different combinations, see how they affect you emotionally. Explore the sounds. You have a framework with which to explore, so really the sky is the limit. Hope you find some success trying this out and maybe taking the general principle and applying it to other areas of creativity. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, this has been Ryan Young. Keep it creative, my friends. Au revoir. Yes, I've broken the firewall. Time to download some child pointers. Excellent tips for raising your kids. What did you think I was gonna say?